In addition to deciding the best academic option for their children, many parents are also faced with the decision on whether to let them play sports. Darwin Salam, former Alabama football player and owner and head coach of Squad Inc. Training, joins us now to talk more about the issue. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me on again. Right now, what are you hearing from players and parents about coronavirus and safety concerns? Um, the main thing that we're hearing around the compound is that people are used to taking the necessary precautions that they have to take, wearing masks in, in situations where they can't properly social distance. But at this point, I think a lot of the parents and players are just hoping that they can play a full season. Uh, a lot of the parents have expressed concerns about being able to watch the games. Um, a lot of the players are just, you know, chomping at the bit like kids are excited. They've been putting in a lot of hard work to play, so a lot of kids are looking forward to the opportunity to do that. Some parents tell us they don't understand why students weren't allowed in the classroom, but they are allowed to play contact sports. What's your perspective on this? It's America. Uh, sometimes we tend to prioritize things a little bit differently than what we may uh, think about until we're faced to be in that position. Right now, we're faced with an opportunity to do digital learning, e-learning. You can't really e-learn and play sports. Um, you can play e-sports, but this isn't the same thing as football, basketball, our, our concern. So um, there are better ways to teach outside of the classroom. You can do it online, but as far as sports are concerned, you can't really play sports online. So to compare one with the other is kind of unfair because it's two different ways that youth uh, people are engaged, whether you're playing or just supporting your classmates. You can't really do the same thing online with, with, at, with athletics as you can with academics. So it's two different things in my opinion. What types of safety conversations are you having with the athlete to mentor? Uh, just try to do what you can. Responsibility is one thing that we try to preach here. Control what you can control. You don't necessarily have the uh, ultimate control over what people around you do, but if you can make sure that you're washing your hands, sanitizing, wearing a mask, and you are in, in situations where you can't properly social distance, you are being the most responsible person you can be. And that's what we all need in this day and age is more responsibility on the individual level. Um, because at the end of the day, if we can all be a little bit more responsible, we can get back to a more normalized way of life. And I think we're all looking forward to when that happens. This sure. week, we've already reported on a local youth athlete that's contracted the coronavirus, and the team had to quarantine. How will you handle a similar situation at your facility? Well, if a, if a youth athlete comes down with the coronavirus at our facility, we'll do our absolute best to, to make sure that we have taken all steps to properly sanitize our facility. Um, it's really difficult to say where people have gotten the coronavirus when they have came down with the illness. So we would take as many necessary safety precautions as we can. Um, but we aren't the only place in the area that's open. So we would have to be realistic with ourselves not beat ourselves up if the person gets very, very ill. And we would just have to be there for that person and support via text, via emails, however we can be, but also try to let our other clients know that we have to be responsible. We have to be aware of the situation that's going on because we don't have all the control in the world. But like I said, we do have responsibility and we have control over that responsibility. What are some of the different things that you're doing in your facility to keep student athletes safe? Um, we, we try not to let student athletes share weights. Uh, it's really difficult to um, it's really difficult to use the entire gym as a social distancing location. Um, at some point in time, people will come less than six feet in contact with each other. At some point in time, people will share equipment. We sanitize equipment at the end of our training sessions. We vacuum. We make this area, this uh, location as clean of an air facility as possible. But at the end of the day, it, it's a location that people come and sweat, breathe heavy in. So as long as the state is allowing fitness centers to remain open, we will use every bit of our means of responsibility to keep this place as clean as possible and as well ensure and uh, assure our clientele that we're doing our absolute best. Anything else that would be important for us to know tonight? Along the lines of sports and coronavirus, I think it's very important that we take uh, responsibility into our primary way of life, whether it's wearing the mask, socially distancing, staying at home as much as possible. And if you do choose to go out, keep social distancing in mind. We have to understand that wearing a mask 
may not be the most comfortable thing in the world, but it's what could be something that helps the world get back to where we were with the activities being in, a, in a, an environment where we can share each other's space and respect each other's space as well. And I challenge people to just pay attention to what's going on in the community with local issues outside of the coronavirus and sports starting back up. Darwin Salam, former Alabama football player and owner and head coach of Squad Inc. Training, thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. Y'all have a great day.